Hey guys, it's Mike. I'm back. And as you know, I've been traveling. It's been a busy fourth quarter. Uh, I've been down in Australia, New Zealand, uh, the Philippines. And then the last couple weeks, I've been working all hours remotely. So I'm starting to catch up. Um, besides the remote projects, I've been also trying to work on a global mobile strategy for a particular company, which has been uh, probably more challenging than I anticipated. Kind of fun, but it's keeping me busy. So, rewarding though. Uh, also tonight I finally got to take a break and went out to see Rogue One. Great movie if you had to number it in the Star Wars trilogies, or sorry, if you had to number it in the Star Wars series, uh, I'd probably say it would be number three and a half. So it's the events that are immediately preceding Episode Four, A New Hope. And today is also the day that Carrie Fisher passed away. And it was kind of interesting that uh, the last scene in the movie, she was, she was in the movie uh, as a digitized copy of her younger self. So it's kind of neat to see her and a little surreal at the same time. Uh, she will, however, be in episode 8. They did finish filming that prior to her passing. But anyway, what are we here for today? I'm here to talk about uh, Unraid 6 and running virtual machines. As you know, I've been running virtual machines in my Unraid server for some time, but it's been mostly as an experiment. And what I've been doing recently is I've actually started using it to run like an SQL server. Uh, on my Unraid 6 server and it's running in a Windows 2012 virtual machine. So as I started to actually use this in sort of a production capacity, I noticed some performance issues. And essentially what was happening is as I would copy large numbers of files to my virtual machine, I would notice it would be fast for a few minutes and then it would drop off a cliff and be about third to speed. And I recognized the pattern. It was essentially the same thing as when I was copying files to the drive array before I put in a cache disk. So what's happening is as it, as it starts to write data and then it starts to generate that parity information for the parity disk, uh, the performance slows down. And that's the whole reason that Unraid came up with the concept of, um, of a cache disk. So you could write directly to OneDrive that didn't have to deal with that parity information. And then after your client connection goes offline and you go do something else, there's a mover process that runs uh, that goes ahead and puts that data on, on the array with the parity information. So from a server's perspective, it's no faster. In fact, the server's got more work to do. But from a user perspective, you're able to get that data to that server faster and move on to other things. And that's kind of what that's all about. Now, where that information applies to these virtual machines is, with a virtual machine, you've got an image file that's essentially the operating system you're trying to run. So Windows 2012, Linux, uh, Windows 7, all that stuff's gonna be in uh, some kind of image file that's stored somewhere on your Unraid server, that when you start that virtual machine, it's read as the file system for the guest operating system, okay? And in my case, I looked at where I stored that image file and it was on the drive array. So as I was writing files, it didn't go to the cache disk, it's going into that virtualized uh, environment or that virtualized disk that's stored on the drive array. So when you copy large amounts of data, it still has to generate that parity information and it slows things down. So the obvious way to fix this is to move that drive image to the cache drive itself. So it's always running off that cache drive. And I did this as an experiment before making this video. Works great. I'm back to the performance you would expect on native hardware or very close to what you would expect on native hardware running as a virtual machine. So you're probably already saying to yourself, well, if it's only on a cache drive, it's never going to get to the, the, the array and you're going to have potential uh, issues with backup and things like that. So in other words, if you lost your cache drive, you could potentially lose the information on your virtual machine. And that would be correct. Uh, unless, of course, your cache drive is mirrored, then you got a little redundancy there. But the way I look at it is even within these virtual environments, they've got access to your server. So data that you're writing should still be copied up to a user share on the Unraid server. And what that image should be is to run the operating system um, and all the things associated with that. And what, I, what I've done is I've set it up so that the actual image file for the virtual machine is on the cache drive and it runs very, very fast. And within that server itself, I map drives to the Unraid server to store the data for that server, which actually makes sense. That's what you would do if you had a separate physical box, right? You'd map it to the server. And then I also run a job, um, and you can either do this on the Unraid server itself, or you can do it uh, externally, that backs up that image file to a backup directory on, on the Unraid server itself. So your data is protected, 
external backups you need also, but your data is protected, you get the performance, win-win, best of all worlds. So what I've done is I've saved one of the virtual machines I've run, which is still an experimental one. I got a Windows 7 virtual machine that I've still got set up the way I had it before, where the virtual disks are on the drive array and I'm having performance issues. So what I'm going to do for you here is I'm going to show you if you have an existing virtual machine, you're having those disk I.O. performance issues, how do you move that to your cache drive so that you gain full performance? So without further ado, let's get started with that. And looking, I'm glad to be back. Looking forward to making some more videos for you. Let's get started, guys. So hey guys, this is Mike. And what I'm gonna do now is demonstrate to you how you can take an existing virtual machine on your Unraid server and move it to a share on a cache drive. So in other words, you're not going to use the drive array at all. You're just going to use the much faster uh, cache drives that's there. So if I go, example, to my dashboard, you can see I've got multiple drives in the system. I've got my parity drive. I've got two disks in my array, and I've got my cache disk over here. Now what we want is over on this cache disk is where we're going to want to put our virtual machine. And you can see I've got a couple virtual machines up here as well. I've already done this with my Windows 2012 virtual machine. But I'm going to show you where my Windows 2010 virtual machine is. So let's go out here to VMs. And let's click on my Windows 10 VM and click Edit. Okay. So what you have here is you have your install ISO, which you build out at the time you go ahead and create your ISO image. And then you have your primary disk location. And this image file itself is where your virtual machine runs from. And if you look, I've got uh, uh, mount, users, vdisks, and that's where it's located. Now I'm going to show you what I did with my Windows 2012. Edit that one. And if you look, uh, mount, cache, cache, vdisk, c. So let's go out and look at our shares. So I've got vdisks. This is the share I originally created for my virtual disks. And this one here is actually on, on the array. So if you look down here, included disks all, uh, it's just a normal SharePoint. Nothing special about it all. It's on the array. And the problem is, uh, even if you have a cache disk specified, when you update uh, files it, and it's going inside the image, it's not a separate file that can go out to your cache drive and then be updated later by the mover partition. It's going to be a file that's going to want to be updated directly into this image file so you don't take advantage of that uh, cache drive and you're not getting the performance benefit out of it. So what I did is I went out and created a new share called vdiscs.c. So if I go in here, you'll see the main difference here. It still says included disks all. But right here, this is the important part, use cache disk only. Now, I did find out one thing, and this might be a tip for you guys. Um, if you try to change this later, like in other words, if you create a drive that's sitting on your array and then you change it later to use cache disk only, it does not seem to work. It doesn't really move the folder and it doesn't take advantage of that cache drive. But if you say use cache disk only at the time that you create it, What's going to happen is this folder is going to be created on the cache drive itself. It's never going to be moved into the array. So when you do updates, it's only going to write to the cache drive. And that's what we want. And that's why I created a separate share here. So I just created it it's called vdisk C, and I just called C for, for the cache disk. Uh, virtual dis virtualization disks on the cache drive for performance. Your allocation method and all that doesn't really matter because you're not going to be in the array. Okay, so included disk all doesn't really matter. As soon as you check this use cache drive only, it's going on the cache disk. And if you have your cache drives, for example, mirrored, um, it'll be mirrored as well. Uh, in this case, I've got a single cache disk, so it's going to go on that single cache disk. And again, talking earlier, you still should back this up at some point because now you're not getting the protections of the array, but that's fine. In my security settings, I just made this a public share, which is fine because, well, one, the server's secured, not many people can get into it. 
uh, and second, you can't really log into the virtual disk virtual machine anyway. So now the trick is going to be to go out here and actually move the file that I previously had on VDisk S and move it to VDisk C. So let's go ahead and do okay, that. So what I'm doing here now is I've just pulled up a Windows machine. Um, you can do this through your Mac Finder if you want. But I just navigated out to, uh, I guess I can just go ahead and show you again here. So if I just navigate out to my server, which in this case is Elsa, um, my old SharePoint, VDisk S, which is just VDisks, that's all it was, was plural. And this is where I had originally kept all my image files for my virtual machines. So if I go in here, uh, you'll see I have my Windows 10 virtual machine here. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut this, so Control X. And I'm going to go back, and remember when I just created that VDisk C, which is on the cache drive? The C means it's on the cache drive. You can have any naming convention you want. This is just me and being a little OCD. So I'm going to navigate into that folder. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. So Control V. And this could take a minute. Hopefully not 22 minutes. But this could take a minute because uh, you're basically moving it from one folder to another uh, on the same server. And truth be told, this is a virtual machine that I'm running on my Mac. Uh, it's an old Windows 8.1 virtual machine. I just wanted to use Windows Explorer just because I figure a majority of you guys are on Windows. So I wanted to show you how to do it this way. Okay, and now the file's copied. So now this entire share is on my cache drive and only my cache drive. So let's go back and look at my administrator for my Unraid server, and we're going to do some reconfiguration there. Okay, so here we are back at my configuration screen for my uh, Unraid server. Uh, you can see my different share points here, and I'm in the, uh, the share screen. Now in Unraid, you can always go ahead and look at what's in your shares by just clicking on this little folder over here. So if you can see here, my uh, VDisks share is now empty because I moved it over to VDisk C. And if I go here to VDisk C, you can see here I now have my Windows 10 uh, folder as well. Okay, and by the way, in case any of you are wondering, these little um, triangles, they indicate some files are unprotected, meaning the files in that particular share on the cache drive. Typically that means that when the mover process runs at night, it's going to go ahead and move them into a protected folder on your actual storage array. Um, although the ones on VDisk C, because I told them to only use the cache drive, that will never change. So that's perfectly normal and what we expect. These other drives you see up here are all waiting for uh, the mover to process uh, them into various folders. It's been a busy day on my server. So now we got to go out to the VMs and let's go ahead and edit my Windows 10 VM because if I actually tried to start this right now it wouldn't work because it wouldn't be able to find the image file. Now we need to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and just click in this image file and I'm going to click on cache and I'm going to scroll down to VDisk C because that folder is actually there. Windows 10 and click on my image file. And that's it. Click update. And at this point, we're good to go. I can go ahead and uh, start my Windows 10 virtual machine. And it's running. It's starting up. And that's it. So you can go ahead now and use your virtual machine. And you'll find the performance is now pretty close to native because it's running on a, a local drive. If your cache drive happens to be an SSD, you're going to have incredible performance on it. So that's it. I hope this helps you, and I hope this uh, lets you get better use out of your virtual machines on your Unraid server. I find this a very useful feature. This Windows 2012 I've got here, that typically runs a uh, SQL server for me. That's my database server. Don't need separate hardware. Runs great sitting right here on my Unraid server. Um, this server is scaled up exactly for what I need it, uh, just for a home server. Uh, I couldn't put 100 users on this thing. But for what I'm trying to do for development use and uh, supporting customers, it's perfect. So that's it. Take care.